the experiment. By random process, a number of practicing South Australian painters were approached. Participants signed a statement agreeing to treat the experiment seriously and to work in their usual manner to solve the painting problems confronting them. Each agreed to participate in the documentation by standing in place for 30 seconds and to communicate in a manner other than painting. The method. The experiment lasted two days. A primed three by four foot canvas was placed in a studio facing a camera. In a separate room, the five painters drew for the numbers of a dice. The undrawn number represented drying time. Only the timekeeper knew the time segments previously randomly determined. On the throw of the dice, the chosen painter entered the studio and worked on the canvas until a bell rang. The result of that segment was then recorded. The painters willing to experiment on the weekend of Saturday, September the 7th, 1974. Morning folks, uh, by the uh, throw of the dice and being the most senior member here, I, I'm starting. It's rather cold outside so I've kicked off with a brilliant yellow, a temper of polymer paste, uh, a number 18 Reeves hog hair and uh, a number 8 sable. Uh, just to encourage the other boys with the yellow, I've uh, brushed a few loose patches on. Uh, frustrated by the long time I've been given, I've uh, had to reach out for the black. While I'm back again, I uh, think they've got this game loaded. Um, I was going out for some coffee and uh, they rolled the dice and I'm back again. If I'm back again, I'm going to resign because I think the whole morning's rigged. Uh, I was being generous to the next car by just using yellow. I'm frustrated, so I move off into the three primaries. I just started to paint a red arrow on the left side just to say, well, the next fellow, you make sure you follow up with this. Well, unfortunately, I wasn't able to completely cover the whole canvas in yellow as was what I intended. Um, I found it necessary to try to obliterate what had happened before in order that I could uh, come up with something um, because it becomes an arbitrary thing when one is trying to consider what somebody else has started so I really found that I needed to do away with that and start again. What I did was I chose uh, a colour which hadn't been used before which was green because uh, they've all been using the colours which were pure straight from the pot. Then it's a matter of where do I put something and uh, it seems to be much of a mustard on each side as far as things go so I thought I'll unbalance it a little bit. So I put things over this side um, and my way of thinking about it is, is to make some marks which aren't too self-consciously uh, what I've done is continued painting my lines. Uh, I'm beginning to think that probably what it's um, uh, achieving as much as anything is as a record of the amount of time that I've spent on the painting. Um, the lines themselves I'm trying to make um, as human as possible. It would be possible to say print them on there and, uh, and get them clean and precise. But I've made them meander and wander and Blob. Well, once, once again, it was a fairly arbitrary decision to divide the canvas in half and to change the type of space that it was occupying, the co that, that the colours appeared to occupy in terms of their space in relation to one another. It was a fiddle. Again, uh, we're having a reasonable time outside. Uh, there's some magnificent thick sandwiches, coffee, and uh, good articles about health studios in the paper. Uh, I had a look at the pit, uh, canvas, and uh, it seems the young ones are making it a bit wild, so I've given them some definite instructions of uh, how to construct a Renaissance cylinder. Uh, I haven't quite finished the lettering, but uh, this would be how to construct. 
it's difficult to avoid an aesthetic decision. So uh, I've just had to forget all of the lovely things that have been going on. Um, it seems as though this side here is mine, because this thing here is dominating the side. Uh, so I'm going to continue it completely to the top, fill the side. Maybe then uh, I'll have to make another decision about perhaps on the other side, just to balance it. The painting to me suggested landscape and I've tried to place another totem within the format. That's all. that uh, my colour was depending on the um, mix that was on the palette. The last fellow had been using a sort of a mushroomy colour, so it starts coming out as sort of a purple. Um, and I just got to the top here, and I'm starting to think about what else I can do in the time's gone. Well, this time, everyone seemed to have put a trademark in, so I thought I'd put a trademark, and then <coughs> I thought I'd cross them all out, and uh, it's getting uh, to be quite a collection of uh, trademarks, the painting. It's a beautiful afternoon now, the sun's out, uh, I guess West Torrance is playing Glenelg. Lynn and I have been out kicking a plastic football and keeping away from the dog. Oh, the painting, um, well it's interesting that it's still uh, retaining some figuration. I guess the lesson I started on the cylinder has paid off and people are beginning to uh, make things over here. I think it's now getting closer to us, so that's why I've erected a flag in hom homage uh, to the action. What I thought I'd do was um, repeat this little uh, geometric solid form by uh, just using a line uh, down the bottom here. And um, I introduced then a horizontal. I thought it would be rather fun to repeat the horizontal through the picture, like the same way as I did on the left side, so that uh, it may be used as a sort of a structure. Well, on first viewing, when I came in, I found that something had to be done to the edge of the canvas, which nobody else had tackled. But really, I, I find it really unsettling in the fact that I didn't know what to expect when I come down here, because I've been waiting for a long time. And really, I haven't been able to settle down and perhaps do the things which would normally be in my character with what I do within a painting. And I found that most of it's just sort of trying to work out. It's like a big doodle, really. It's, uh, it's such fun, scribbling over other people's marks, making your marks over somebody else's marks. It's a very arbitrary thing. It's, it's really just a doodle. Some of the problems which other people have left have become less annoying to me. Some people have followed up areas which I left, and again, I could add to those. I seem at the moment, I'm just concentrating on adding some very fine bits of detail, and I'm gradually settling down and joining the problems I normally face with, with my other work in with the problems which are set by the people who are working on the project. What happened 
happened here is I decided that uh, the pink was pretty gruesome, so I tried to get rid of the pink and uh, this lovely purple shade over here that just looked so superficial that it just had to go. So uh, I mixed up my favourite brown and I tried to get rid of that, but I think, I, I think I've left it in a rather upset position for the next person now because uh, it certainly um, needs a lot of fixing. I think part of the problem is that when you're working by yourself, you normally think at least, well I do, I think two stages ahead, I know what my next immediate action is going to be, and as I do that I perhaps think of a follow-up. What happens here, that we don't have enough time to do the follow-up, and when you get back again, well, you've got other things to follow up other than what you had planned for yourself. I just found that I needed to rework that particular area I started on and, and then that just didn't seem to be good enough and I've tried to just put a glaze over the top. I think I should have left it. I've, I've spent this time trying to decide to solve my own problem and in effect I should have been really tackling some of the other problems which haven't been touched for quite some time. So perhaps this time it was really a waste of my own part. Maybe if I come back again I'll I won't try and do that, I'll just sort of get on to some of these other areas which are, unless somebody else tackles them. Oh, oh, hi. Um, I've just been outside having a sleep and uh, I woke up, I've been dreaming about bats. The dog stopped playing football and uh, anyway, uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to almost since the afternoon's over to farewell you by a long voyage. Uh, I've just managed to put in the water and it's a nice big white boat. I guess someone will come along now and uh, paint the lifeboats. What I tried to do is get rid of that border. I think that I don't like um, borders on the paintings as they seem to restrict it too much and, and dictate too much of what has to go on inside. So I tried to get rid of the border. I'd dearly love to have got rid of the ship too. But I haven't quite got to that. I haven't got quite rid of the borders down the bottom. And there was an ugly looking uh, definition of some kind of vague space there that I thought should be even more vague. So I've tried to reduce that too. Uh, plus another line over the other side that I tried to reduce. Seemed to be a de-definer. Seemed to want to get rid of the uh, shapes which I can recognise as being something in which my mind seems to make uh, images out of so that they just become vague and misty. Um, and I wanted to get rid of prettiness. I uh, didn't like some of the parts which seemed to be left there because they were attractive rather than meaningful. Uh, maybe the whole thing's meaningful anyway, but I had to get rid of the uh, pretty bits. Um, I think what was fairly predictable about this whole project is that with very little drying time and the fact that this is being operated on very quickly by a number of people is the fact that when one colour is simply painted over another they are going to need to blend and simply even though we're working from primary colours into blending gradually goes to the tertiary and the secondary and eventually it tended to be and has become quite messy. One of the few ways of just getting some pure primary pigment on was just simply to, to place it on by means other than with a brush or with pressure. What I did was this excellent dog of red here, the uh, clarets flowing again and uh, the idea was that uh, I wanted to continue the marks that Bob had made over to the edge to sort of give the suggestion that the, the uh, picture kept going, that it wasn't contained just within the frame, but continued further as it actually does. Um, I couldn't see any sense in changing anything else in the film. Great series of blunders. I uh, tried to follow up the drips and drops, blobs, by a, a few drip lines falling on, falling down the canvas and uh, decided that maybe um, I should try and wipe them off to see what effects happen underneath. Um, unfortunately, when you get to this point, the, the canvas is too covered with, with um, too much 
So I thought that I might try and wipe it back, which I've done in two places. Paintings become a bit cha chaotic, or had. Uh, I tried to cover some of that. Um, I tried to let some of the marks make their own shapes. Um, and I also tried to bring out a few points that uh, other people have left because it's become my, uh, dominated by me just recently, um, so that there are anchors for other works um, and a little bit of something from the past too. I was going to put some marks on it this time, some uh, calli calligraphic sort of markings, but I decided uh, that I sh shouldn't just start again, but I should continue and uh, try and fine up these remaining um, edges that are coming out of the space uh, to try and make them blend in a little bit more subtly and uh, appear a little more solid in the space that they occupy here. I'm feeling a little bit divorced from the whole thing now. At the moment I'm just scratching around on uh, somebody else's picture. I've tried to deepen the shadows and um, I put a border in. So that on the other side I've begun to paint out the effects with the dribbles because they've seemed to only effects. I emphasised a few of the angles which we brought in a bit before, maybe to uh, help hold the um, other little additions on too, the circle and the lines. I just added some small colour graphic brush strokes to the colours which were already distributed over the canvas, just adding more detail. The colours I used either complemented the background colours which are already there, or else with the same colours, just a little bit more intensity, just to bring actually more detail from the interblended colours which already exist on the canvas. Some big stripes at the other end were needed just to sort of cut down that big red on the other end. I've tended to add some um, calligraphy to the already supplied, but what I did was um, faded some of them back just a little bit, wanted to give them a bit of ancient history and uh, softened up some of them, some of the uh, sharp edges over there. Didn't get any time or anything else. Hello again, it's um, about 22 hours since I've last seen the canvas. As you can see, uh, we're just finishing lunch. It's a beautiful day outside, a bit sunnier than yesterday. Um, when I last looked at the canvas there, you remember there was a ship, probably belonged to the Orient or P&O line, and uh, I was just about to paint in the smoke, and the bell went, and I'm very sad today that the ship isn't there, so, because last night I practiced quite intently how to paint smoke. I thought the painting needed a little bit of work tonally and I attacked it first with a pencil and then afterwards with some white and uh, various tints and then black. I felt a little happier this time. rather interesting collection of um, marks on the canvas now so I found it a little bit difficult to um, decide what kind of marks I'd make because they they're very personal I think a lot of the uh, marks that the other painters have been making um, to try and find something that might work in with them uh, I used a calligraphic sort of brush mark 
um, but it seems like an intrusion. It's nice that there's a lot of um, history behind this painting. Uh, I think I find that uh, I keep thinking if I was doing uh, the kind of painting that I am doing when I'm painting on here, uh, I would have finished it in ten brush strokes, whereas I keep on trying to build on um, in an attempt to use the time, I suppose. But um, I think that I would have had a very simple background and the marks would have just been it, that's all. I've been rather fascinated by the uh, ways I can grow on rocks. It's a good excuse to sit around on rocks and look into little ledges and uh, try and count up the number of sticks and stones and different kinds of little coloured thingos growing around down there. They come in some terrific colours, I think that's part of the fascination. And they seem to grow in completely random ways, they overlap each other and spot around. Well, I guess the last guy, uh Having come in looks like a Mark Toby, a calligrapher. Uh, you can notice this in the sky. Anyway, it seems to scream out to me as if it's uh, some almost a Bosium storm cloud. So uh, I'll let back into a bit of landscape and the next guy can finish the hat off by putting in the post. And I've drawn in for him. You may not be able to see an old water tank on the right. Um, and he can uh, change the other white marks into screaming galahs. I'm so glad that Jeff uh, was able to uh, introduce a little bit of humour into this thing because it was beginning to weigh pretty heavily on my shoulders. I feel a little paranoid every time I come in. So I did a nice little job of just touching up, finishing off some of his uh, little architectural additions to the, to the house which he'd become, uh, including the shed in the background.